we'll talk about work. I mean, I briefly did it with a garage door spring work earlier, but now this is for real, but there are two different expression of integral. So this is mighty confusing. So let's just get the theory work. Generally, if the force is constant, it's force times the movement, distance, displacement, whatever you call it, right? But suppose these things vary, right? And then possibly you can divide this up, okay? Let's take a derivative with respect to, mm, let's just say, not with respect to, let's just do, do infinitesimal differential idea with the like dt, right? Product rule applies, you realize that? So it looks a little weird, but df x plus f dx is what you're supposed to get. You know what I'm saying? This creates a lot of, lot of problem because you have the differential here and differential there. So it's like, what, right? Okay, but usually at this level, we just use one or the other. Our application, the word problem context will give us just one or the other, okay? So typically we'll have this idea, dw is equal to, and more common and easier one is this, f dx, okay? And if you integrate this, your work will be from position A to B, of your f as a function of position times dx, okay? However, today we'll see the other application, like or x times df, what? And this one will give us the work, different way to calculate work, okay, from your f being quantity a to b, whatever, x times df. Okay, these two are two fundamentally different type of problem. Okay. Okay, we'll take a couple of examples. Okay, now, first, lifting potential energy, lifting something, right? Suppose there's a box. So here's a ground. And then suppose there's a box. And then I'm going to lift it. It doesn't want to paste. Not that. Doesn't want to copy and paste anymore. Okay, I'm lifting that box up. Make everything blue. And this height is H. Okay, now, then this DF dw, amount of work, tiny little infinitesimal work, this is really constant, is f of the gravity times the x, x varies from zero to h, you get it? Now, what is the amount of force that is required to lift a box with a mass m? Right, amount of force that's acting upon this have you seen this before, physics people, mg? Mass times gravity, that's your weight. You know what I'm saying? You have to, have to at least match it. I mean, if you apply the more force than this, then you actually accelerate. So initially it's like slightly stronger, but it's like you're matching it. So what we have is mg and dx. Are we good? Uh, I'm going to call it y. It's a vertical motion, dy. 
this looks like this is G. This thing is G, not I'm gonna make sure it that really looks like G. Okay. So far so good. Now we can integrate. So our work is integral from zero to H of mg dy. Okay. And that's going to be mg y. And this is another expression that the textbooks, math books do a lot instead of bracket. If it's just one term, only if it's just one term from zero to H, and then that will give us MGH. Is what your physics teacher taught you. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm going to take another example. This is a spring. So suppose there is We did this one briefly before. This thingy and there is some kind of object. Right here. OK, and this there's a spring attached to this. OK. Now here's an equilibrium position zero. OK, and X denotes the amount of movement from this equilibrium, positive and negative side. OK, in that case, it obeys the Hooke's law. So F is equal to where negative KX by the spring. OK, but if it's you who is supplying the force to stretch this, then this thing becomes positive. Eh? You have to at least match that much. So in this case, DW still is F times DX, isn't it? And that is KX DX. You with me? OK, so your work is equal to integral of 0 to X. And once again, if I use X here, I cannot put X here, right? So let's put dummy variable T. And that becomes one half k t squared evaluated from zero to x. So that's the potential energy one half k x squared, which is what your physics teacher taught you about the potential energy of this beam. Good. So both of these are using this application. F is the work dw is equal to f and dx. Let's take a look at the other application then, x times df. When do we ever see that? Well, I have a nice example of that, which is this. This tank looks kind of familiar. Do you remember this one? The relative rate tank? Yeah, it's the same tank. Okay. There is filled up with uh, some kind of liquid. And this is the density. Right, this thing denotes G times the tiny little mass, which is the density rho. Okay. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. Okay, now we have to pump this thing out up to that level when Y is equal to 10. Are you gonna do that? Conventional thought is why don't we take this water and then this is filled up to how, how high is it up to eight, right? Yeah, two feet off the top. So from zero to eight, all of that cone and then just lift it. To that height, right? But that you're doing a lot more work than necessary because this top layer of the oil has to elevate way up there then. No, no, that's not. When we pump this thing out, you are elevating all of the molecules of this liquid up to that level. Good. So idea is this. You slice it infinitely thin to a disk of oil and then elevate it up to that and then throw it away. The next slice gets elevated and throw it away. Next slice and all you keep doing that. So you see that disk method coming up? Yeah, each of this infinitesimal disk is being elevated from whatever its position, which is Y, 
zero to y up to that y is equal to 10 height. You with me? Okay, so I'm gonna calculate the amount of force it requires to lift this, okay? Do you remember that F of the gravity is equal to mg, right? Right? However, this is infinitesimal disk, so df, there's where the df comes from. You get it? This is infinitely thin. And so this is dm times g. So far, so good. Now, so g is constant, 9.8 meters per second squared. So what's dm? Do you notice that uh, when we say density, that is mass divided by volume, right? So you see that mass is equal to density times volume, right? So if it's tiny infinitesimal, then we do that. You get the idea? Differential? Remember chapter four, differential idea? So dm is equal to rho times dv. Still with me? And then rho is this dv, you get it? Actually, in this case, it's g rho. Because when you say density, it's mass divided by kilogram per cubic, I mean, in this case, something per cubic feet. But when you say pound, pound is actually a force. Did you know that? Okay, in our book, they always give you, this is called, the, instead of a mass density, this is known as the weight density or force density, amount of force it requires. You get it? So weight density and the mass density, those of you who take physics are not the same thing. So you have to multiply, you have a mass and you multiply by G constant in order to get the weight. And pound is really the force. So you, just, you can just put that. So you can just use it as a row instead of G row, but then I'm a physics major, so I have to do it correctly. Okay, so now what is dB? Huh, that's our disk method now, isn't it? So we have G, row and this is pi r squared pi and your radius is x a remember x y pi x squared dy how about that and now we have to find the function x as a function of y well there it is right that one okay so we plug that in so what we will have is g rho pi and then y over 2 quantity squared dy. You with me? So far so good. Now I have to find dw then, right? Remember dw is some kind of distance times df, isn't it? Okay, so distance, what is my distance? Well, this thing has to travel from this position y to y is equal to y, if you will, to y is equal to 10. So that's my distance, isn't it? That I have to move that disk. So I'm gonna have 10 minus y times df. You with me? Okay, simplifying everything. So I'm gonna put pi over four g rho and then i have y square i'm gonna put 10 minus y first 10 minus y and then y square dy how about that thing huh that is a lot of complication eh you with me who's lost this is not an easy stuff to swallow, so let me know right now. Okay, I'm going to integrate. Let me push this thing a little, oh, not like that. I'm gonna push this thing a little bit inward, resize it a tiny bit so I can use this space to integrate. I'm gonna erase this. So my work will be 
integral of all of this, but from 0 to where the liquid is filled up, so 0 to 8. Good. And then I'm going to put all of that. Uh, so pi over 4, g, rho, and I'm going to distribute y squared. So we have 10y squared minus y cubed dy. So far with me? Okay, after that, it's downhill. It's like setup is the more than half. Like setup is 60 to 70% in this business. So I will have pi over 4, g, rho, constant outside. Then this is y cubed, therefore 10 over 3, minus y to the fourth power, therefore 1 fourth from 0 to 8. Ah, somebody brave. Evaluate this for us. And then remember, g rho is 57 while you add it. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to do it in my head. 9,728 pi. And then what's the units, not joules? We are using pound and feet. So unit there is foot pound. I'm gonna foot pounds. How about that? Questions? You kind of get it, but you don't at the same time. Kara. Um, for DW, how did you get 10 minus Y DF? Could you okay. say? So up here, DW is some distance that you have to travel, move times the DF, right? So we got the DF part, which is this, right? So the distance is this disk is moving from here, this position Y is equal to Y to Y is equal to 10 up to the top. So that oh. distance, maybe I should write it here. This is, oh no, I can't. It's like that's the distance you travel. You get it? Okay. Any other question? Oh, yeah. Wait, it says to the rim of the tank, right? To the what? To the rim of the tank, wouldn't that be yeah, the top? Uh -huh. Yeah, top right here. But it's filled within two feet of the top. Does that make a difference? No, 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 no. no. See, the liquid is filled up to that two feet off from the top, but we are elevating it to the rim of the tank, which is y is equal to 10. Get it? And then, of course, the limits of integration is wherever this liquid oil exists. That makes sense to you? This yeah, yeah. A, yeah, this is not an easy concept, but hey. Any other question? Um, yeah, Mr. Kim, so more general, how do we know like which formula to use in which situation? Okay, this not always, but in general, most of the time, if you're moving a block that cannot be taken apart, then that whole block moves as a whole, right? Then the way you think is how much work does it take to move it tiny bit? That's dx, right? Mm -hmm. If you're moving a liquid or sand or anything like rope that can be bent or taken apart, such as in this case oil, then it's usually DF and then that travels certain distance. How about that? That was an excellent question. Yeah, I know kind of like, like for the first time, if you're doing this for the first time, how do you know which is which, right? I mean, I kind of know through experience, but yeah, that's like general rule of thumb. Any other question? Okay. There is F, right, as a function of X times DX. So far, so good. Okay, now I'm going to, here's a piston, assuming, or this could be square, but most pistons are round, circular, but it doesn't really matter for us. So let me sketch this piston a little bit. So this piston will look like this. Uh, 
right? So as the piston pushes this gas a little bit, gas will contract slightly. Let's just think about this. Here's the area, and this is dx, right? And this whole thing is dv. The little bit of compressing of the gas, so the volume will decrease by that much surface area times the height. That makes sense to you? Okay, now the other thing that you want, to, I want you to remember is pressure. Force is, pressure is force divided by surface area, correct? You remember that from chemistry? So force is pressure times area, isn't it? Do you buy that? That sounds remotely believable. So what we have here is, this is pressure as a function of X, as much, how much you compress or expand the gas, times the area times dx. So first of all, but A times dx, as you can see here, is dV. So this is pressure times dV. So far, so good. Now let's calculate the work. So work is from position A to B, whatever that is, little bit of movement, F times dx. But then that F times dx, we can rewrite it as P, your pressure times dV. So far so good. Now we have changed our variable from X to V. So we have to change this instead of position A, position B to some kind of volume one to volume two. Good. Say yes. Right, okay, so that's part A. Now part B. Now we are actually evaluating the integral, right? So here in a part B, the work is from your CD pressure is proportional to the volume, right? Do you see that P is equal to proportional to the volume? Okay, let's start PV. I'm going to do this with green. PV is equal to NRT, right? Uh, I have no idea what that means. Do you... So P is equal to NRT over V. Right, that's what they mean by this thingy right here. Okay, so this whole thingy, I'm gonna call it K. So we have K over V, how about that? Okay, so now work, we'll have K over V to the 1.4 power is the function that they want us to use for negative 1.4. And from the, what's the 243 to 32. Good, times dv. Okay, so we're there. This is ideal guess, so I guess it's exact, not exactly inversely proportional. This is off by a little bit. Now we integrate this. So we have, I'm going to take k outside. So I have k here. So we subtract 1. So we have v to the negative 0.4. And then, therefore, divide by that 1 over negative 0.4. Okay. 
and then from 243 to 32. And if you run all that number, then this will be, what is it, this thingy? Negative 37, wait, 968.75 inches and pound. Instead of foot pound, how about that? This part is just calculation part. Good. Okay, moving on. Number 17. So we are pumping this water out. I really don't like having them having set the Y as a positive here. So I'm going to change this thing a little bit. I'm going to make this negative. So Y is the positive upward, okay? Otherwise, this thing becomes really, really confusing because the force that you have to apply is upward and then you have to set that as a negative force. So it's like, that's not good, okay? Now let's figure out A here. Let's figure out the amount of force that is required to lift this one rectangular slab of water, which is infinitely thin, okay? And that is density times volume, eh? And I could call that G rho, but it's pound already, so let's just call this thing. So this is my rho. So far, so good. Okay. And then this thing, of course, is dimension, which is 12 by 10. So I have 120 times dy uh, rho. So far, so good. And dw. Now I have to be careful. Amount of distance that I have to travel, which is from here to here, right? And you might think that's y, right? No, it's not y, it's negative y. Do you know why that is? Because this axis is in negative direction. So that if I say y, that's some kind of negative number, but I want that distance from here to here to be positive number. The other way you can see that is this, actually this is easier, zero minus y. Is it better? Upper level minus lower level? Yeah, okay, so what? anyway, we have negative y times df, good. Actually, I'm gonna move this thing up here like so, and write it like this. And that, of course, is the negative 120 rho, and remember rho is just constant, our density, and y dy. So far, so good. Now we can integrate. So W is equal to from now 0 to neg neg negative 20, starting down here, all the way up to 0, A, eh? from low to high. And we have negative 120 rho. I don't need that print. I don't need that parenthesis and y, and then dy. So far, so good. Taking constant outside, well, negative, we have rho y squared, so half of a 60, like that, eh? And then evaluate that from negative 20 to zero. Okay, and if we do that, we're supposed to get this Of course, rho is this thingy up here, so you can plug it in and multiply, but at this point, I'm kind of being lazy. Okay, did I tell you to do B or not? I think I might have said not to do B. I did, okay. Uh, this is a more of physics concept, which will never be on your test, but let's go through what power is, horsepower, right? 
and some kind of foot pound per second. So as you can see, power, I'm going to do B down here. When you say power, really is the derivative of work or energy. So how fast can you do this amount of work? You know what I'm saying? So if it's constant power, then you can just divide by T. Okay, so you have horsepower, so how long, and so in our case, just work divided by time. Good, because this is 5 over 11 horsepower motor. Well, have actually that amount of power, 250 foot pound per second. You know what I'm saying? So how long will it take? So what we have to do is T is equal to work divided by power delay. So we have our answer from here to 24 row divided by our power, which is 250. And then whatever the answer you get, you get it. And they say this should be 100 minutes about. But this is more of a physics concept, so it's like this will never be on your test. Good.